Welcome to our lecture on IFRS 11. As always, you need to ensure that you have your lecture notes with you. You need to open your revision page as you watch the lecture and you need to ensure that you have your IFRS 11 standard with you. This is a nice short lecture guys. Majority of our time will be focused on our basic concepts in terms of IFRS 11. How to distinguish this between a joint venture and a joint operation. And then we will briefly look at the disclosure. In terms of the questions that you can expect, theory discussion questions, extremely important. Therefore, you need to ensure that you know how to attempt theory questions. Where are we currently with our IFRS standards covered by our group accounts? We have already discussed IS 27, IS 28, IFRS 3, and IFRS 10. We are now busy with IFRS 11, our joint arrangements. Remember that a joint arrangement has to include joint control. And once we have determined that, yes, this is a joint arrangement, this can either be a joint venture or a joint operation. Now let's look at the basic three steps. Our first step, we need to determine if there is joint control. Now, how do we determine this? There has to be a contractually agreed sharing of control of an arrangement. Therefore, guys, there has to be an arrangement where entities will share control. Now, how do we identify within this arrangement if there is joint control? We will look at three important elements. The first will be our contractual arrangement. Therefore, we need to ensure that we understand the details in our arrangement. It must be present in some form. The second important element, we need to identify the sharing of control. No single party can decide on its own. Therefore, we need to identify who has to make decisions on what. And then number three, extremely important, the agreed consent. Now, what does this mean? If there is two parties in our arrangement, both of these parties should agree to decisions being made. Now, step one, if we have determined that there is joint control, we know that this will be a joint arrangement. Now, guys, important, when you read your questions in the test, you need to identify where are you within your steps. Do you still have to discuss step one or did they already indicate to you that this is a joint arrangement and you only have to discuss step two? Now in step two, when we identify our classification of a joint arrangement, a joint arrangement can either be a joint venture or a joint operation. Let's discuss our joint venture. This will be, for example, when we have three entities, A, B, C, each of them earns 33.3% of company A, B, C. And we have identified that there is significant influence. Therefore, in the separate records of Company A. Company A can choose in terms of IS27 to account for this investment either at cost or at fair value through OCR or profit and loss or three based on equity method. Remember, number two and number three excluded. And in our statement of financial position of A Limited, we will have a line item investment in associate and in our Profit and loss, we will have a line item, profit or loss share of our associate. And we need to equity account, therefore we will include our net assets. And it is important that you know that we will call entity A our joint venture. Now when we look at our joint operation, we have determined that there is control, joint control. Therefore this is a joint arrangement. And let's say, for example, we have entity A and B. Each of them owns 50% in a newly formed entity AB. In the separate records of A, 
we will account for 50 percent of entity AB. Now what does this mean guys? 50 percent we will add all of the assets and liabilities of company A 100 percent and of company AB we will add only 50 percent of the assets and liabilities. In step three our accounting principle if this is a joint venture we need to equity method accounting and if this is a joint operation we include only our percentage in the entity we have discussed our basic concepts in terms of step one i want to focus on step two now before we look at step two it is extremely important that you understand that we have already determined in accordance with step one that there is joint control therefore this is a joint arrangement in terms of rfrs 11 and we now need to determine if this joint arrangement is either a joint operation or a joint venture When we need to determine the classification of a joint arrangement, our first criteria that we need to identify is what is the party's rights to assets and obligations? We will discuss this by means of three elements. The first element, we need to ask the legal form of the separate vehicle. Does this give the parties rights to the assets and obligations for the liabilities? relating to the arrangement. If the answer is yes, this is a joint operation. If the answer is no, we need to refer to our second question. What is the terms of the contractual arrangement? Does this give the parties rights to assets and obligations for liabilities relating to the arrangement? If our answer is yes, this is a joint operation. If the answer is no, we need to ask our third question question is there any other factors and circumstances that give the parties rights to the assets and obligations for the liabilities relating to the arrangement if our answer is yes it's a joint operation if our answer is no it's a joint venture now let's first have a look at our legal form of a separate vehicle when we refer to a separate vehicle this means a separately registered entity with sub c therefore a separate legal entity now if our agreement for example indicates that there is a newly registered entity the legal form of this entity has its own right this is important guys if there is a separate vehicle the legal form of this separate vehicle will provide the entity with its own right now what does this mean own right this entity will trade in its own name therefore this entity will be responsible to submit all tax returns this entity will be responsible for any liabilities the entity will be responsible and not the individual parties now a basic example we have company a and company b they've entered into a agreement we've determined that there is joint control therefore this is a joint arrangement and this is company a b c a newly registered company now do you agree with me that company a b c will have its own rights in terms of assets and liabilities and not entity a or b not the shareholders therefore we need to ask ourselves the question does the legal form of the separate vehicle gives the parties rights to assets and obligations relating to the arrangement therefore if there is a separate vehicle most probably this might be a 
joint operation. Question number two. The terms of our contractual arrangement. If, for example, the contractual arrangement indicates that the shareholders will sign for guarantees, for our registered entity, therefore our separate vehicle. Again, same scenario, company A, company B, registered company ABC Limited. And the agreement indicates to us that our shareholders will sign for guarantees. It is important that you identify that this is not an obligation of our shareholders in terms of the liability. Now, let's write this down. This will not be an obligation for our shareholders in terms of the liability. Therefore, when we ask this question, the terms of our contractual arrangement, does it give the parties right to assets and obligations? And there is a signed guarantee by the shareholders. This will not mean that it's a joint operation. If our answer to question two is no, we need to consider question three. Is there any other factors and circumstances that give the parties rights to the assets and obligations? Now, what does this mean? We need to look at what is the purpose of our registered entity. Now, to assist us, I have provided you with two criteria to think about. Now, to explain this, I'm going to do this by means of an example. Now, the first criteria, the question, the activities aim to provide the parties with an output. Now, in our example, again, we have entity A and entity B enters into a joint arrangement and register entity ABC. Now, the question that I have is, who will benefit from Entity ABC? Remember, this can either be only the shareholders or third parties, customers outside our group. If this is only the shareholders, our answer, yes. Then we need to ask our next question. If our answer is no, we need to identify that this will be a joint venture and our shareholders will recognize the net assets in terms of our equity method accounting. If our answer is yes, we need to ask the following question. Number two, it depends on the parties on a continuous basis for settling the liabilities relating to the activity conducted through the arrangement. Therefore, our question will be, is the parties or shareholders the only source of cash flow to settle liabilities? If our answer is yes, we know that this will be a joint operation. And if our answer is no, this will be a joint venture. Now I want to look at not a separate vehicle versus a separate vehicle. If we have identified that there is not a separate vehicle, immediately you know that this will be a joint operation. Therefore, my recommendation, if I'm you, on this diagram, include a question mark. If the answer is no, you know that this will be a joint operation. If it is a separate vehicle, remember a separate vehicle is a separately identifiable financial structure, including a separate legal entity registered. If it's a separate vehicle, then it can either be a joint operation or a joint venture. Now guys, we did go through the details. You can work through this diagram on your own. The disclosure of joint operations. IFRS 12 indicates to us that we need to disclose the following information for each joint operation. One, the name of the joint operation. 
the nature of the entity's relationship with the joint operation, the principal place of business, and the country of incorporation, the ownership interest, and if different, the proportion of voting rights held. Now let's look at a basic example. We have Garden Limited, Rose Limited, Sunflower Limited, and they've structured a joint arrangement in a separate incorporated entity, Daisy Limited. Each party owns 33.3% of the entity. Daisy Limited enters into contracts with clients and the assets and liabilities relating to the arrangement are held in Daisy. The legal form of Daisy indicates that the parties and not Daisy, this is important guys, not Daisy have rights to the assets and obligations. Guys, you will remember that we have indicated one, that they should be a contract, two, they should be sharing of control and three, all of the parties involved should agree to decisions. Once we have determined that there's joint control, we need to identify if this is a joint arrangement that is a JV or a joint operation. First question. What is the legal entity's terms? Second, does the contract indicate who has the rights to assets and obligations? And third, is there any other terms and conditions? They indicate to us that the legal entity is a separate incorporated entity and then they indicate to us that this legal form indicates that the parties and not Daisy have the right. Therefore, immediately we know this is a joint operation. Accordingly, the legal form of Daisy Limited and the terms of the contractual arrangement indicate that the arrangement is a joint operation. Garnet Limited has joint control over a block of offices in terms of the contractual arrangement and has 33.3% interest. Now we need to disclose the information in the annual financial statements of Garden Limited. Joint operation. The joint arrangement is based on a contractual agreement. Guys, we need to indicate this in place between garden rose and sunflower which entails that garden owns 33.3 percent the legal form of daisy indicates that the parties and not daisy have rights and obligations for the liabilities held in daisy according to their percentage interest held now guys do you see that this note disclose the important information to the readers of the financial statements. Now I'm going to be honest with you, based on IS24, I do think that it is important to disclose all related parties included in these notes as well. But that's just my opinion. There has to be a related party note in all sets of financial statements, according to me. And I think that is extremely important, especially if you now look at all of the facts in our industry. Okay, so guys, you need to study this and you need to ensure that you know this. This is an easy question in an exam and you need to ensure that you obtain the marks.